Ever since Pokemon became popular in the late 1990s here in the West, it's always been a cultural thing in our society, whether it was Pokemon cards being banned from school grounds or religious organizations talking about Pokemon characters as demonic and satanic. It's always been something that's been part of our national discourse ever since it made its way to the West. Pokemon Go captured that same cultural moment in 2016 when the game released here. And last year, Logan Paul, strangely, of all people, brought Pokemon cards back into the discourse when he started opening old original booster sets of Pokemon trading cards. And recently, as of last week, he brought this back when in his fight with Floyd Mayweather, he wore a holographic Charizard card around his neck when he entered the fighting arena. This is not something that I regularly talk about on the channel. I talk about Pokemon, but I don't necessarily talk about Logan Paul or YouTube celebrities, but I think this is a cultural touchstone moment. So we're gonna talk about it a little bit. Let's jump right into things. Now, before I get into the rest of the topic, I just wanna make it very clear that talking about Logan Paul and talking about this Pokemon mashup and strangeness with him and a fight against Floyd Mayweather, which was incredibly shocking that he didn't get his ass kicked in the third round, but that's a discussion for another day and not a discussion for this channel. I wanna make it very clear that I do not condone a lot of the stuff that Logan Paul has done in his career. He's done a lot of terrible things. I am not a Logan Paul fan at all. But this is an interesting cultural moment that we have not seen from Pokemon in a couple years. Now, as I mentioned in the intro, we Pokemon was a cultural touchstone in the late 90s. News broadcasts would regularly talk about the Pokemon franchise when the movie came out, when schools would ban its, ban its trading cards from their campuses and their grounds to stop kids from not paying attention to their education, to viral videos of pastors talking about how Pokemon characters are demonic and satanic, and that they're gonna turn your kids against Jesus all of that good stuff. Those moments dissipated as the years went on while Pokemon's popularity remained prevalent, but in 2016, a lot of that changed with Pokemon Go. I don't know who created Pokemon Go, but I'm trying to figure out how we get them to have Pokemon go to the polls. Ugh, it's just... It's such a bad clip. <laughs> when this game was first announced, the Pokemon community was incredibly excited about it. I can remember tons of reaction videos from YouTubers and it being talked about on websites, gaming websites and non-gaming websites about how this could be the future of the franchise. This could bring Pokemon back into relevancy. And for all of us who were in the community, we already knew that that relevancy still existed. The game still sold incredibly well, but that cultural piece to any mass media franchise is incredibly important. It's one of the reasons why in the last year and a half, Avatar The Last Airbender has made such a comeback because when it hit Netflix, it became culturally relevant again. This is the same thing that we saw last year with Pokemon cards specifically. Logan Paul, one of the biggest YouTubers on the site, decided to start opening up old Pokemon cards and his polls would go viral. He even got to a point where he would start to do collaborations with other Pokemon YouTubers. It was a weird environment at the time. And if you've seen my video a couple weeks back about Pokemon cards, which is linked in the top right of the screen right now, you can go check that out. It sent the Pokemon trading card community into a frenzy. Pokemon cards were selling out everywhere. You couldn't buy them. The prices were getting jacked up online to where you were paying $100 for a set that would regularly cost you about 30. Booster packs were impossible to find in stores like Walmart and Target, even to the point where a couple weeks ago, stores like those stopped selling Pokemon cards in their facilities because their workers were getting harassed. They were getting death threats. People were coming in and risking the safety of other people shopping there or people who were working there and when you're in a global pandemic you really can't have people running through stores trying to get specific things it it just it was not a good scenario logan paul really started that last year for as much criticism as you can give the guy he has an incredibly large megaphone on the internet and when the internet dominates our lives every single day nowadays it makes perfect sense that when he talks about something, when he covers something, when he does something, it gets massive, broad public appeal. Just look at his fight with Floyd Mayweather. The fight crashed the website in which it was being streamed on for a period of time the other day because people wanted to see, quite frankly, probably Floyd Mayweather knock the crap out of Logan Paul. I know that's why I was watching. Now, I was not watching on one of those pay-per-view websites. I, 
I'll leave you to decide how I was watching that. But Logan Paul is a lightning rod for controversy, for discussion, for all of this. So when he walks out to this fight wearing a gold chain with his holographic Charizard base set card within the chain, it made headlines everywhere. Every single gaming outlet covered it. And when you cover Logan Paul and you cover Pokemon or some other mass media franchise, it explodes and it, it drives views, it drives clicks. It's not just that Logan Paul benefits from covering Logan Paul. The websites and the news outlets and the YouTube channels, myself included, making this video, get pretty good support when they talk about a topic like this. This is why it's so culturally relevant when somebody like this talks about something like a Charizard card. We've seen in recent weeks, this surge in Pokemon card popularity has not gone away. The prices are still ridiculous. You have tons of online retailers selling Pokemon card sets for 60 plus dollars when you could regularly buy them for anywhere from $11 to $30, depending on how many cards you bought in the lot. It's ridiculous, and with Pokemon getting ready to release a new set later this summer that they've given out to some YouTubers recently who have done some coverage of it, they're gonna have to really boost production. This is the same thing that happened in 2016 when Pokemon Go came out. The cultural relevancy of the franchise Pokemon got a major boost, to the point where Game Freak looked at its relevancy and said, let's make some changes. If not for Pokemon Go, you wouldn't have had the mechanics exist in 2018 with Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. Those games introduced Pokemon Go style capturing mechanics. You did not battle wild Pokemon, you simply tried to catch them. And when you tried to catch boss Pokemon, instead of throwing Pokeballs and getting their HP low, you would beat them in a fight, and then it would transition to the Pokemon Go style battling, and you would have a chance to catch them. Logan Paul is the single biggest reason why Pokemon cards sprang back into relevancy last year with the pandemic, and the pandemic was definitely part of it. I don't want to claim that it had nothing to do with it. When people are locked in their homes and people don't know what to do, they're going to go to things that they remember from their childhood. It's part of the reason Avatar, as I mentioned again, became so popular because when we're all, that's how I came back to YouTube last year because when we're all locked in our houses we go back to things that are comfortable for us and pokemon cards was such a nostalgic thing for so many people so when you combine the pandemic and you combine such a massive online celebrity like logan paul talking about pokemon cards it creates that touchstone that i mentioned before and that is why when he does something like this he's a creator that's been wildly successful and for other creators who are out there trying to make it big online and make it big on the internet you might not want to copy what Logan Paul does, but it's not the worst thing in the world to try to study how people like him think. Because the way he thinks, in my opinion, is in terms of engagement. How is he going to get the most eyeballs on him? And part of it at this point is self-fulfilling. He is so big that just the fact that he exists in the ethos of our society gets him views and gets him clicks, gets eyeballs on him. But all of it is to engineer his what he does, his advertising, his promotion of whether it's fights or YouTube videos or back in the day music videos with his brother or his brother being on Disney Channel, all of these different things. It's all to get the eyeballs on him because in the Internet age, in the age of advertising and of YouTube and streaming, eyeballs and watch time is the central important thing. And this does a lot for the Pokemon uh, community's relevancy as well. Pokemon YouTubers interacted and collaborated with Logan Paul last year when Pokemon cards exploded and when he started opening them. It's a touchstone moment, as I've mentioned three times now. And it's something that I think we should take note of because why Pokemon becomes relevant could determine how Pokemon chooses to a market themselves in the future and how they choose to roll out products and other things. It's an incredibly important thing and it's, it's essentially a self-fulfilling prophecy. Now, obviously, for the, the purposes of this discussion, the results of the fight do not matter, but regardless, it was a disappointing fight. It was not worth the money if you paid for it. Um, but Logan Paul wearing the Charizard card is interesting because it's interesting to see how many celebrities and how many big time names have this history with Pokemon. There's a lot of other celebrities who seem to have a love and fascination for the franchise. A couple years ago, uh, Ariana Grande's tattoo of Eevee went viral. We've seen examples of Katy Perry and Post Malone putting out music videos for Pokemon's 25th anniversary this year. Moments like this with Logan Paul are going to influence how Pokemon continues to market themselves. Don't be surprised if in a couple years, Pokemon makes an even larger 
bigger push to involve celebrities and involve pop culture in the promotion of their products. I don't think they're going to specifically use it to promote their video games because that's a very specific entity within the Pokemon company and their apparatus of, of franchising and marketing, but expect them to do it in terms of things like music videos, the anime, trading cards, toys, the big, big sellers that the Pokemon company has that is kind of separate from the rest of what Nintendo does with the franchise. It's moments like this that really are going to change how they approach it. And if they're good with marketing, who knows? You might, and Logan Paul knows this. He knows that when he walks out with a Charizard gold chain, he knows that he's going to get a ton of attention and he's going to be talked about in circles that he would not regularly be talked about in. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. It's a very, it's a fascinating thing for creators to look at. It's a fascinating thing for companies to look at to figure out how can we better market our stuff? How can we better reach an audience that we might not already reach? And it's interesting to look at for the future of Pokemon. So that being said, did you watch the fight? Do you care at all about Logan Paul and his antics uh, on the stage? Do you care that he did not get the shit kicked out of him by Floyd Mayweather? Because that kind of bugs me. But with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this very different video. If you did, please be sure to hit that subscribe button. The support on the channel has been fantastic lately. You guys have done a ton and you guys have been really enjoying the content that I've been putting out. And for that, I thank you. With that being said, a lot of you who watch these videos are not subscribed to the channel. So as I mentioned before, if you're new here and you enjoy this content and you want to see more Pokemon discussion content and more Nintendo content in general, please be sure to hit that subscribe button and make sure you never miss a video by hitting that notification bell as well. And with that being said, I've been Linky and we'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.